Yellowstone supervolcano, the super eruptions that deposited volcanic ash. One of them is at Huckleberry Ridge, the tuff there. This is the latest on Yellowstone Caldera Chronicles, dated June 17 by the Yellowstone Volcano Observatory and USGS. As we know, Caldera Chronicles is a weekly article written by U.S. Geological Survey, Yellowstone Volcano Observatory scientists and colleagues, and Montana State University takes on Yellowstone National Park. This article, Yellowstone Caldera Chronicles, during the spring term 2019, geology students, they're so lucky, really so lucky to be doing this on hands at the uh, one of the uh, largest supervolcanoes in the world. I took uh, geology one course only because I was a biology major, but I just really loved it. Now, during the spring term 2019, geology students from Montana State University participated in a reading group focused on understanding the geology of the Yellowstone hotspot. The culmination of the class was a field trip into Yellowstone National Park to see firsthand the deposits that had been discussed throughout the semester. The goal of this field trip was to gain a better understanding of the three largest caldera forming eruptions and the overall progression of the Yellowstone hotspot, which was shaping, which has shaped the park over the past two million years. So their trip focused on ignimbrites, lava flows, and fall deposits, the major types of volcanic deposits found in and around Yellowstone National Park. An ignimbrite is formed by a pyroclastic flow, a P flow, which is a mixture of hot gas, ash, and rocks. In contrast to these quick moving flows, which move at speeds of several hundred miles an hour, rhyolite lava deposits are thick, slow-moving flows that make up many of the hill slopes near Grand Prismatic Spring. Finally, a fall deposit is a mixture of pumice, ash, and crystals that is typically laid down during the earliest phase of the explosive eruption prior to the pyroclastic flows. When exploring the Yellowstone area, you may not realize there are several calderas, depressions, creations through the evacuation of magma, forming the complex geology within the region. An eruption that occurred 2.1 uh, million years ago deposited the Huckleberry Ridge Tuff and formed a giant 93 by 60 kilometer, that's a 58 by 37 mile depression which is the largest of the three calderas. Subsequent eruptions produced the Mesa Falls Tuff around 1.3 million years ago, creating the Henry's Fork Caldera west of the park, and also the Lava Creek Tuff around 0.63 million years ago, which formed the Yellowstone Caldera. This is a caldera which currently makes up the central position, the portion of Yellowstone National Park. Upon arriving in Mammoth, the Montana State University students summited Mount Everts, where a spectacular odd crop of Huckleberry Ridge Tuff is exposed. Students in, uh, distinguished two types of deposits, an ingdenbrite and a fall deposit by mineral composition, grain size, color, hardness, and depositional structures. The depositional structures preserved in the fall deposit provide evidence of reworking by wind and water, whilst the contrasting colors throughout the unit indicate differences in grain sizes. There are also signs of post-depositional heating from above caused by the emplacement of the high temperature ingdenbrite on top of all of this fall deposit. The next stop was Sheep Eater Cliff, an outstanding example of columnar basalt from an eruption about 108,000 years ago. As students traveled further down the trail along the Gardner River, they encountered the Lava Creek Tuff, a thick ingdenbrite that is distributed throughout the park. The Lava Creek Tuff is easily identified around Gibbon Falls and Tuff Cliff, 
by its pinkish gray color. Leaving Yellowstone National Park, the group entered Idaho, and there they explored the Henry's Fork caldera, one of the smallest caldera forming eruptions of the Yellowstone hotspot. Along the Mesa Falls scenic bypass, the rim of the caldera can be observed to the west, and outcrops exposing the pink colored Mesa Falls tuff and fall deposits are found along the Highway 20. Now, the diversity of the volcanic features of Yellowstone National Park provides a rich landscape of educational benefits for the students. Through identifying three major ignimbrites in and around the park, the students were able to develop observational skills for recognizing different types of volcanic rocks. Comparing the deposits from different time periods highlighted both the similarities between the deposits from each caldera forming eruption as well as their unique characteristics. Yellowstone is truly a volcanological wonderland and outstanding outdoor classroom for amateur as well as professional geologists alike. Now the latest current alert having to do with Yellowstone supervolcano, it's dated June 1st, 2019 again, Yellowstone Volcano Observatory. And uh, it says, recent works and news, in May 2019, Steamboat Geyser returned to its pattern of more frequent activity, with water eruptions occurring almost weekly. On May 3rd, 8, 13, 20, and 27, field work by YVO scientists during the month involved the deployment of semi-permanent GPS stations to 15 locations around Yellowstone National Park, as well as maintenance of the Norris Temperature Network, including the data logger at Steamboat Geyser, which had not been operating due to an earthquake failure, sorry, an equipment failure. Seismicity. During May of 2019, the University of Utah seismograph stations responded for the, responsible for the operation of analysis of Yellowstone Seismic Network located 77 earthquakes in the Yellowstone National Park region. The largest event was a micro-earthquake of magnitude 2.8, located 17 miles west-northwest of West Yellowstone, Montana, on May 6 at 7.04 p.m. MDT. The earthquake was not reportedly felt. Yellowstone earthquake activity remains at background levels. Now, what about ground deformation? There were no major changes in surface deformation in Yellowstone area as recorded by GPS stations. Ground subsidence of Yellowstone caldera continues as it has since 2015 at a rate of 2 to 3 centimeters per year. In the area of Norris Geyser Basin, GPS data shows little net deformation since October 2018. An example of GPS data can be found at the link below at the, by the UNAVCO instruments. And Yellowstone Volcano Observatory provides long-term monitoring of volcanic and earthquake activity in the Yellowstone National Park region. Yellowstone is the site of the largest and most diverse collection of natural thermal features in the world and the first national park. YVO is one of the five USGS volcanic volcano observatories that monitor volcanoes within the United States for science and public safety. And YVO member agencies, USGS, Yellowstone National Park, University of Utah, University of Wyoming, UNAFCO, Inc., Wyoming State Geological Survey, Montana Bureau of Mines and Geology, and Idaho Geological Survey. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. 
more of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece, in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.